JFT just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to JFD's weekly market outlook webinar for the week September the 21st until September the 25th. I am Haralambos Pissuros, Senior Market Analyst here at JFT, and I will describe the most important economic releases and events on the financial agenda for the week ahead. But uh, before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, although we don't have much data on the agenda for this week, we do have four central banks deciding deciding on their respective monetary policy. Those banks are, uh, those banks are the RBNZ, the Riksbank, the Norges Bank, and the SNB. No bank is expected to proceed with any changes on monetary policy, and thus all the attention may fall on clues and hints with regards to their future plans. Now, with regards to the data, the most important may be the preliminary PMIs for September. So let's uh, begin with today. Today there are no major economic indicators or releases on the agenda. So we will quickly go to Tuesday. On Tuesday during the early European session, we have the Riksbank uh, monetary policy decision. At its latest gathering, the Riksbank decided to extend its framework, its framework for its asset purchases from 300 billion SEC to 500 billion SEC up to the end of June 2021, while it announced that in September it will start purchasing corporate bonds. The board also decided to cut interest rates and extend maturities on lending to banks, despite keeping the repo rate unchanged at 0%. Now, latest inflation data showed that both the CPI and CPIF rates increased even though by less than anticipated, but the core CPIF metric, which excludes the volatile items of energy, has slowed 1.4% year over year from 1.5%. Now, in any case, we believe that after acting at the previous gathering, a tick down in the core CPIF rate is unlikely to urge Riksbank Bank policymakers to proceed with any policy changes at this uh, meeting. Later in the day, the US existing home sales for August are coming out, and the forecast points to a slowdown to 2.4% month over month from 24.7%. Now on Wednesday, during the Asian morning, it's the turn of the RBNZ uh, to decide on monetary policy. At its latest gathering, this bank decided to keep its official cash rate unchanged at 0.25%, but expanded its large-scale asset purchase program, adding that the package of additional monetary instruments must remain in active preparation including a negative uh, interest rate and purchases of foreign assets. So since, since then, uh, the only top tier economic data we received uh, was New Zealand's uh, GDP for the second quarter, the quarter, the quarter over quarter rate of which slid to minus 12.2% from minus 1.4%. That said, although a 12.2 quarter over quarter contraction is a severe one, this is still better than the, bank, than the bank's own forecast of minus 14.3% quarter over quarter. Therefore, combined with the fact that the bank has expanded its stimulus efforts just at the prior gathering, this is likely to keep officials' fingers off the easing button at this gathering. They may prefer to wait for more data before they reach at safe conclusions as to whether more stimulus is needed or not. So what we will watch at this meeting is the accompanying statement and uh, whether officials are uh, willing uh, to push interest rates in uh, negative waters or expand their uh, QE purchases at one of the uh, upcoming meetings in, in the next few months. If so, the queue is likely to come under selling interest. If, they, if the hints are not so clear and uh, they just reiterate that uh, more instruments are uh, in preparation, like they did in the previous meeting, uh, this may come as a disappointment to those expecting a dovish 
uh, and Dovish uh, language, and the queue is likely to strengthen. Now, during the European uh, trading, we have the, prelim the preliminary manufacturing and services PMIs for September from several Euro area nations and the blog as a whole. Eurozone's manufacturing PMI is forecast to have risen somewhat to 51.9 from 51.7, while the services index is anticipated to have held steady at 50.5. Strangely, this is expected to drag the composite index slightly lower to 51.7 from 51.9. Now, at the prior ECB meeting, policymakers kept monetary policy untouched, reiterating that they stand ready to adjust all their instruments as appropriate to ensure that inflation moves towards its aim in a sustained manner. That said, although President Lagarde said that the risks of the economic outlook remain to the downside, the bank's uh, GDP projections were revised slightly higher. Thus, small movements in the euro area PMIs are unlikely to raise speculation that further easing is on the cards for the upcoming ECB gathering, which means that the euro is unlikely to move much if the actual prints come close to their forecasts. For speculation of further easing to increase sustainably, we need to see the PMIs missing uh, their forecasts by a large margin. We get preliminary PMIs for September from the UK and the US as well. No forecast is available for the UK data, while uh, with regards to the US ones, the manufacturing index is forecast to have ticked up to 53.2 from 53.1, and the services one uh, to have declined to 54.7 from 55. Now on Thursday, the central bank torch uh, will be passed to the Swiss National Bank and the Norges Bank. Kicking off with the SNB, its latest meeting at, uh, its latest meeting in June proved to be a non-event as officials kept interest rates unchanged at minus 0.75% and repeated that they remain willing to intervene more strongly in the effects market. They also reiterated the notion that the Swiss franc remains highly valued. Uh, with uh, President Jordan saying that they made substantial interventions, uh, interventions since March and that there is no specific limit and there is no specific limit to that now with the franc uh, trading uh, currently trading at higher levels against the euro than um, back then we expect jordan and his colleagues to reiterate once again that the franc is highly valued and to continue signal signaling willingness to intervene when necessary so we expect a reiteration of uh, the language we received at the prior meeting. We don't expect any fireworks and thereby uh, the Swiss franc is unlikely to move massively after this decision. Personally, I expect this event to be, prove, to be proven a non-event once again. Now, passing the ball to the Norges Bank at its latest meeting, this bank decided to keep interest rates unchanged at 0% repeating that the outlook and balance of risks suggests that they will most likely stay at that level for some time ahead. Officials acknowledged that uh, the economy is in the midst of a uh, deep downturn and added that uh, new information largely confirms the picture of uh, developments presented in the, new, in the June report. Uh, with GDP data showing that mainland, mainland uh, Norway contracted 6.3% in the second quarter, very close to the bank's own estimate, and that uh, the CPI is accelerated the, in August, Norges Bank officials are likely to continue sitting comfortably on the sidelines. So we don't expect, expect any action from this uh, bank either. Um, and uh, we expect them to reiterate uh, that interest rates are likely to remain at present levels uh, for some time ahead. And they may reiterate that they, for the new information largely confirms the picture of developments presented in their uh, quarterly monetary policy report. Something like that is unlikely to, to move the uh, knock because the language will be the same as the previous statement. Now, in case we get a more dovish uh, language and um, there are signals that uh, further stimulus may be on the cards in the, in the months ahead, something that I see as unlikely. Anyway, if we do get something like that, the Norwegian Crown is likely to come under selling, selling interest. Now, as for Thursday's data during the European session, Germany's IFO survey for September is uh, due to be released. 
both the current assessment and expectations indices are expected to have increased to 89.5 and 98 from 87.9 and 97.5 respectively. This would drive the business climate index up to 93.8 from 92.6. Now, an improving IFO survey supported by the ZW survey for the month, both indices of which rose by more than anticipated. The US new home sales for August are also coming out later in the day, with the forecast pointing to a 0.1% month-over-month slide after a 13.9% rise in July. Now, finally, on Friday, the only release uh, worth mentioning is, durable, is the U.S. durable goods, goods orders uh, for August. Both headline and core orders are forecast to have slowed to 1.5% month-over-month and 1.3% month-over-month from 11.4% and 2.6% uh, respectively. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. Uh, at this point, I would like to ask if there are any questions with regards to the weekly outlook. Uh, we'll leave you a few seconds to write any questions uh, you may have. Okay, we don't have any questions. Thank you very much for watching and listening. I hope you have a great week and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again next Monday. If you are interested in more detailed and frequent analysis, you can find me on our YouTube ch channel from Tuesday to Friday at around 7.30 a.m. GMT time. So goodbye and have a nice day. JFT, just fair and direct.